Hey guys, welcome to Pantry Living. I'm Stephanie and today we are starting out in the garden. It is February 1st. It seems crazy already that it's February 1st, but we've made it through the first month of the Pantry Challenge. And with that starts the beginning of $50 February. This is kind of taking Pantry Challenge to the extreme in my mind. What is $50 February? Well, basically for the whole growing season of 2023, we have been tucking away food preserving everything that we grow to put in the pantry to get us through to the next growing season. And $50 February basically means that we go through the month of February using only what we grew or produced, or at least as much as we can. Anyways, at Hickory Croft Farm, we basically strive or have a goal of growing 75% of our food. And we are darn close to that, to be honest. And if you want to know any more about that, you can definitely check out our other channel. But we still purchase a lot of things and that is where the challenge comes in is can we purchase all those things that we still require and not go over the budget now what is the budget well basically you're fifty dollars a person for the month of february plus twenty five dollars for each extra child so because we're a family of four we have hundred and fifty dollars that we can spend on groceries for the month of february and that's it and really the goal is to spend as little as possible but one thing that we really want to do is try and make it realistic. We don't want to change how we eat just for the month of February because with our ultimate goal for the homestead of growing 75% of our food, we need to learn how to put that away and we need to make it work for the year because as I uh, showed you here in the garden, nothing is growing right now. So we are months still away from being able to just grab stuff out of the uh, garden and eat and save money that way. But I'm going to go inside and we're going to go over a few numbers and we're going to talk about what $50 February is going to entail for us. It is time to work on some stuff for school lunches. So we are making some apple leather using our applesauce that we put away this season. Actually, it's not this season. I'm lying to you. It is from 2021 for the most part because we are terrible at eating applesauce. So we sent James down and he's come back up with four different kinds and we're going to use four trays and make four different types of apple leather in order for the kids to have a supply for school for probably a week or two. So let's take a look. All right, so James brought us up blueberry applesauce. Look at the beautiful color on that. Mixed berry, strawberry, and a plain. This is such an easy thing to do and so wonderful and healthy for a fruit snack. Basically, they end up similar to a fruit roll-up and uh, it's nice to know what's in it, how much sugar, all that sort of good stuff. So. It'll be probably two days on the dehydrator and then we'll be eating it. So in 2023, we also participated in $50 February. It was a real big learning curve for us on all the things that we didn't even realize we were taking out of the pantry here, there, and you know, everywhere. This is a pantry challenge in a way, but not like what we participated in in January. This is pantry challenging to the max in my mind because anything that was store bought is counted. And that is tricky because you don't realize when you're just taking a little bit of this or a little bit of that, how much it adds up. So we're going to this year go into $50 February a little bit different. So what you're seeing here is my approach for $50 February this year. I have gone through what we eat. I've taken out the items that I really feel we cannot do without. And I know there are clauses there because we could do without them. But the idea, like I said, when I was out in the garden for us, is to not change how we eat just for a month. We want to develop a way to eat that's sustainable so that moving forward, we can have a wonderful, amazing budget every month of the year, not just on February. So what you're kind of seeing here mostly, I would say, is grains and dairy. And if you follow along on Hickory Croft Farm, you know that's something that we do strive to figure out how to do on the homestead, but it hasn't happened yet. And that sort of makes up that 25% of the food that we do not grow here. So everything that you're seeing on the table right now are brand new packets that we just pulled out of our downstairs pantry. We didn't actually go to the store for any of this except for the dairy milk products. But this is come out of the pantry downstairs. I've made a list of how much it cost us as new packages. And basically it's $112. Now the reason I stayed to the $112 is because I know we're going to need to buy more milk. This is not going to sustain us. As many of you know, we make our own yogurt. 
I'm going to start making sour cream. I'm even going to try and make mayo from scratch for this $50 February so I don't have to budget in a thing of mayo. So we'll see how that goes. Mentioning mayo does also make me think there are a few items that are considered freebies in this. Coffee, tea, oils, salt, pepper, baking products, things like that that you don't need to count. And uh, that certainly helps when it comes to doing the mayo and stuff like that because obviously it's oil based. But I think the big one for us is going to be the grains, flours, rice, that sort of thing, which we'd already cut back huge in the last year anyways. Another thing that I kind of feel I don't really want to do without is making our granola. Uh, that's a big one. So that's why I have the oats and things like that, the chocolate, the cocoa out on the table. I'm opening those packets because I want them for the granola. If we can come up with other things that we can make out of those to use them up, that is great. I actually didn't even open a oat flour because the plan is to take the large flake oats and grind them up if we need oat flour. So stay tuned to see if that happens. But the other thing that we have a lot of is some of the grains that we did grow in 2023. We have millet, sorghum, we have curled dock that we foraged out in the yard. So there's numerous ways that we can supplement what we are budgeting here to hopefully enjoy a content menu and diet plan <laughs> for the month of February. So I really hope that you kind of stay tuned and follow along here. We're gonna kind of still go through the same methods as we did with the pantry challenge we're going to be doing recipes and showing you what we ate in a week and things like that but it is a little bit stricter which kind of makes it a little more challenging so like i mentioned we're starting pretty much with fresh bags fresh buckets on everything including the cocoa the sunflower seeds all things like that but we're not going to use all of that in a month so i'm going to come back at the end of the month and reassess if we only used half of it i'm only going to budget half of the initial purchase price so there will be a little tweaking of that $112 number when we get down to the end of the month and really see what we used. There may be a few items that we've actually added to it because we found that we need them and didn't realize that we did. So I hope it works out. Hopefully we stay under the $150 budget. This is a, a really interesting challenge that actually is put out or started by the Cow Emporium and Old Swedes Farm. We'll put their links in the description below, but definitely take a look at their channels and follow along with them as well because they've done this for the couple years now as well. So we've kind of just gone through and talked about what we need to purchase for February. But the one thing that's wonderful about February is anything that we grew, produced, foraged, whatever you want to call that here on the homestead, traded if you've traded for things that also doesn't count in your totals um, but all of that is almost like free-for-all you can eat as much of that as you want as long as you have it and as you know from following along with our pantry challenge and the most recent pantry tour we still have a lot on our homegrown pantry area and the potatoes we still got a lot of those and a lot of squash and one thing that we're starting to get a lot of again is eggs so Definitely, I think we're going to make it just fine through February. But I just wanted to also say that even though we do have a selection here of our store-bought items, that pantry downstairs that you've seen over and over and over is going to really, really help sustain us through this month. So one thing that's interesting, if you uh, really dive deep into these numbers, which is something that Chris and I love to do, as I'm sure you're starting to learn as you're following along with us here, but... The average cost to feed a family of four here in Canada for 2023 was just under $15,000. And they're estimating that it's going to actually be over $16,000 for 2024. And that's an incredibly high number. So pushing yourself to be $150 a month is a dramatic slash. Now, as I'd stated, we try or at least are striving towards growing 75% of our food here on the homestead. But if you look at that, that still leaves a surplus of $334 a month. So if we were actually needing to buy that 25% of our food, the budget would be around $335. So $150 is still a dramatic slash from a national average. And I know that might not be relevant to anything in this video, but I just thought it was a really interesting fact when we're looking at this and planning how we're going to tackle $50 February is if we can do it for 150, we can definitely do it for 335. So 
<laughs> as I mentioned, there'll be things that are added to the list. So we're starting off February and we're making those items that we know we're going to need. I'm going to be making granola today and I'm going to be taking a lot of that milk that you saw on the table and we're going to be making yogurt. And I realized I needed a third of a cup of brown sugar in order to make my granola and I hadn't budgeted a thing of brown sugar. So even though I already had it open and on the pantry, I am going to add the $1.99 for the brown sugar. So now we are up to almost $114 and it's only February 2nd. <laughs> but anyways, it is time to really get going on this uh, granola. I've already rated my oats and four cups gone. And one thing I have to say is four cups out of the uh, oats doesn't leave you a lot to work with for later. So maybe I'm way off on my budgeting. So we're going to get this granola made. We're going to get it in the oven. Uh, I've done this recipe before, so I'm not going to bore you with all those details, but this is something that I know we're going to be making probably one more time throughout February because we do it every two weeks or so. And uh, hopefully our supplies will hold out for that. All right, so our granola is in the oven. So that is one thing done for the next two weeks. And now we're going to be making yogurt. We're going to be using five jars, five liters basically, of our whole milk that we buy from a local creamery. Uh, it's wonderful. We actually buy non-homogenized, which is wonderful because then I can scoop off the cream. And with this, I'm actually going to make sour cream once I have all the rest of the uh, milk off the top of these next couple jars. So we're gonna put those five liters in. The nice thing with the yogurt is I'm using my own yogurt that I previously have made as a starter, so there's no cost there. And this time we're going to sweeten it with maple syrup instead of honey because I didn't wanna to have to budget in the cost of a jar of honey. So since we were already opening the maple syrup for our granola, that's what we're going to be using today to sweeten our yogurt. So this is kind of a mixture of a whole bunch of stuff all happening at once. This is something that you'll find. Things on the homestead are very repetitious when you are trying to do all your own food or as much of your food as you can. You eat a lot of the same things because they're simple and you know you can grow or do those things. Unfortunately, this time, everything I'm demonstrating here is stuff that we don't do ourselves. But I'm getting all that out of the way at the beginning and budgeting it in so that the rest of our meals can come hopefully from the pantry or freezer. So let's get this yogurt made. Look at that on there. It's wonderful. Really? My spoon doesn't fit in that one. It fit in the last one. Obviously that jar is made a little different apparently. wonderful this is going to be incredible sour cream basically i get about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of pure cream off of each of my one liters so what you're seeing in this jar once we get to the end is going to be 13 liters worth of milk to produce that amount of cream. So we buy 3.8% whole milk. So we find that it makes really, really, really nice yogurt. Anyways, I'm gonna get all these in and get it done and we'll bring it back. Another thing that I have to say I really, really like about using the dairy is the reusable glass bottles. It is wonderful. I know it feels exceptionally old fashioned, you know, it's like those days when they used to deliver it to your doorstep every morning fresh. I know it's not quite the same as that. That's a real romantic notion nowadays. But it does feel like I'm doing something. I don't know why. It, you know, environmentally, it's great. I love supporting a local dairy. Uh, so, you know what? It works in our books. But here's our last one going in. Hopefully it fits. It usually does. There we go. And now we're going to get this to 180 degrees. And then we're going to let it cool off to 115. And by then, the granola should be out of the oven so that we can cool down the oven. And then we're gonna incubate our yogurt for six hours at 115 in the oven. So that's going to be the rest of my day. I really do hope that you enjoyed the video. I'm going to take this and make some sour cream. Basically what you're going to do is add three teaspoons of uh, lemon juice to this and let it sit for 24 hours on the counter and you'll have sour cream. So 
another wonderful thing that we can do with the products that we are purchasing. And it saves us a little dollar and we know where it's all come from. So on that note, I'm going to wrap this video up, but I hope you enjoyed and I hope you follow along with our $50 February and stay tuned later this week when we share a few of our meals and things that we've been cooking up, trying to use what we have here and even experimenting with sprouting and growing a few things that we can grow even this time of year. So have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next one.